Hey everybody, Jeff Cohen here with Jessica Wright. Jessica is a member of our managed services team, but before coming to Seller Labs, Jessica, you had a background in managing very large Amazon accounts. Can you talk a little bit about some of your background and your experience in Amazon management? Sure. So yeah, it's been about uh, 15 years of Amazon experience and I've worked both on the brand side, working for a manufacturer and building a brand from uh, day one of, of Amazon FBA program or circa or 2008, I think, um, and then moved on from the brand side of things to working for a third-party reseller, massive, um, massive FBA program and managing that with the exclusive um, brands that we manage under that umbrella as well. So total side note here, but like we became friends and then like Caroline and I like had an amazing conversation with you. I don't remember how we connected. And then we were like, you need to come to resonate. And we mm -hmm. like, had you come up to resonate. So you've been an attendee of resonate and now you're speaking at resonate. And I think that's pretty cool. And uh, we actually have quite a few presenters this year who were attendees um, at years past. And it's just kind of a cool uh, growth of the overall um, you know, of the overall program and, and where people who have attended resonate what they've, um, what they've grown to. So we do welcome you to the whole Seller Labs team, um, as well as to your first Resonate as a, as a presenter. Thank you. So um, part of your job at Seller Labs is to uh, work directly with clients. And in addition to that, it's to help educate our services team and members of the company around things that are happening uh, within Amazon. As part of that, you um, you do a lot with brand registry and um, assisting people with brand registry and, and talking about the virtues of brand registry. Talk today, right? Today in 2021, um, I think most people know what brand registry is, but if I don't have it, like what type of disadvantage am I putting myself at? And like, why, you know, why, why should I go through the extra effort of getting it? So brand registry is really a suite of tools that is, is made to build and protect brands. So if you don't have brand registry on Amazon, you're really going to have a lot of trouble doing either of those things, building or protecting your brand. Um, and that's, that's really the short answer. There is a long list of tools and programs that brand registry provides within both of those sections um, to really help you enhance the things that you're doing. But the short answer is you can't protect your brand without it and you can't build your brand without it. Yeah. So I'm going to, I'm going to give you some of the technical Amazon uh, terminology that they use, right? So technically within brand registry, there's a limited set of tools, uh, right? Transparency and, and a couple of other ones where you can have registered um, brand agents and things like that. Brand registry is also, and this is an Amazon terminology, is a um, bar for participation in other tools. And so there are other tools within Amazon that have nothing to do with brand registry, but you have to be participating in brand registry to be able to access those tools. Can you talk a little bit about what some of those tools are and what else you kind of unlock when you unlock brand registry? Yeah, so um, Vine, the Amazon reviews program, you have to be enrolled in brand registry to participate in that. Um, one that's really topical right now is um, Amazon attribution. You can't participate in attribution unless you are a registered brand. And that tool gives you insight into what your off Amazon marketing is doing for your on Amazon sales. So that's huge, huge volumes of information that you can't even access about your brand if you're not enrolled in brand registry. Um, some other things that you can't access, um, I mean, stores, if you have a registered agent, you can give access to that, but you, your brand has to be registered for anyone to be able to create and maintain a store for your brand. Um, sponsored brand ads, um, the, um, I mean, transparency you can't enroll in unless you're part of um, brand registry. If your brand is not registered, even though you could give access to someone else to manage that for you, someone has to have the registry for your brand to use it. So one of the misconceptions of Amazon is that if I get brand registry, I can kick people off of my account. 
can I use brand registry as a way to stop other people from selling my products? Not just because you've brand registered, you still have to jump through some hoops. Um, so you still, there's basically two things that you can do. You can follow up with brand registry for IP infringement. Um, so either copyright or trademark infringements, you can still pursue those through brand registry. And if you have a successful case for a single infringement, then you can enroll in project zero, which is a, a brand registry tool that will allow you to, to actually be able to, to select um, infringing users and have them kicked off of your listings. But you have to first enroll in brand registry, have that first successful case. Um, and but I, then just also, clear, I just wanna yeah. clarify for everybody, that's actual infringements of your trade of your patents or misuse of your trademark. That's not just uh, somebody who's reselling your product and you don't want them to resell your product. So if they're Correct. legitimately selling other products that are yours, you can't kick them off. No, you can't. Um, it has to be a true infringement. Now, transparency will allow you to control who is selling your product. Um, Enrolling in the transparency program is a benefit of brand registry, but it's not a free benefit. You do have to pay for the program. You pay for it per SKU that you enroll, and you also pay for it in, in that you have to create these labels and you have to use the labor to put the labels on. So there's a little bit of a barrier of entry for that one, but that does allow you to control who sells your products because for transparency, a product can't be shipped into the Amazon fulfillment centers without the barcode. You also can't fulfill FBM without having those barcodes on it. Every FBM order that is fulfilled for your brand or for the SKUs that are enrolled would have to have a label and you have to upload that along with your tracking number. Yeah, and one of the things I've seen with transparency that's probably um, maybe kind of that holy grail that you just kind of talked about was if you build that into your manufacturing process, it's really not that much extra of an effort, um, but uh, you have to have this like turnover date so you can't have like half your inventory with transparency and half your inventory without it. So it's, it, it, it has to be kind of like a, a certain date where everything manufactured and then you have to like hold it at your warehouse until you sell out of your inventory or you pull your inventory back from Amazon. So it's the easiest way I've seen it implemented is when you're releasing new SKUs. Mm -hmm. It's a, a little bit more tricky to implement it when you have existing SKUs and in inventory at Amazon. Yeah, you get a 30 day window. Once you say, I want to implement this, you have 30 days to sell out of what you have or you've got to pull it back. Yeah. So, okay. Big question I get asked all the time. I've applied for my trademark. The trademark office is taking a really long time. Can I, can I apply for brand registry before I actually have a trademark or do I need the official trademark to come from the patent, the US trademark and patent office to apply? You can still apply with just an application number. You still have to have some other things to, to back that up. So you can apply with that application number and you then would need to have um, still images of your product in the packaging with the branding on it or um, the actual product with the branding on it. You're going to um, also you know, want to have um, some other proof like your website with the, the products already showing on it or um, ASINs on Amazon if they've already been selling. And then it's a good idea to have that letter that came from the USPTO just confirming that you did register um, and you're in the process. Having those things should make that go pretty smoothly with the application number. So brand registry was implemented a, a number of years ago now, I think back in like 2016-ish, somewhere around there. Um, it, it's evolved a couple of times, right? Because there was the old brand registry, there's the new brand registry. Um, they've added the more bars for participation. Um, where do you see brand registry or the participation in brand registry going over the next five years? How critical is it to, to an Amazon uh, brand? I think it's super critical. I think Amazon is really interested in building brands and building the marketplace around brands. Um, and I think that Amazon is also very interested in protecting brands because it protects them because they have had so many issues with IP infringement and trademark issues and patent issues. It's critical to their business that they show that there aren't holes in that process. And that's why brand registry has grown as much as it has over the last couple of years. And I think that it's only going to, to grow and build more and have more, um, more protections, which will also bring more benefits. But, you know, those, those protect protections are going to become barriers of entry for brands that aren't registered. 
there are going to be so many things that you can't do. I mean, already we see, um, you know, people who are the only, they are their brand. They're the only seller of their brand, but they're not brand registered and they can't edit their own listings. There's all these hoops you have to jump through. You have to open cases. And sometimes even that's not successful. I think that type of thing will become more and more prevalent if you don't enroll in the program, because that's, that's the direction things are going. Yeah, I, I agree. I think it's, I think the bar for participation in brand registry is, is being used by more and more applications, more and more programs, more and more ad types mm -hmm. um, that than, than it ever has been before. And I think that's, that's being done for a, a, a pretty particular reason. And I think that, you know, one thing I heard the other day, somebody say that I, I really agree with, which is that Amazon telegraphs their moves. And we like to think that Amazon is, is somewhat crafty at times, but I don't think they are. I think you just have to learn how to read the moves. And I think brand registry is one of the moves that if you haven't read and participated in, you're a little behind the eight ball, but it's easy to catch up. And, uh, and if you already are doing brand registry, now's the time to make sure you're taking full advantage of everything that brand registry has to offer. Are you taking advantage of all the features and functionalities that it unlocks? Because it's a lot. And those are the things that can give you a competitive advantage in your business. I mm -hmm. want to thank Jessica for joining me today. If you have any questions for Jessica, please reach out to Seller Labs. I know she'd be happy to get on a phone and discuss them with you and see how she can help you build your brand and make it bigger. Everybody have a great day. Thank you.